Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am really happy to see of, um, you in this 10 years of celebration of gift as an institution. And in this specific session, we're going to be talking about the transparency portals and the more than 10 years of accompaniment that gift has provided to all these portals. And uh, we have the, we take pride on knowing that we have been accompanying all these initiatives and from the gift network, we have transparency portals, not only as specific portals, but also as an integrated strategy for information across the tax cycle. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. As we all know, the principles one to four of the principle uh, of the accountability principles talk about these topics and have meant a uh, very important tool for gift work. And this has been actually one of our main activities and today it continues to be so that is accompanying and providing technical assistance and bringing better information to the citizenship. I would like to greet all of our speakers from today. We have Suni Arari Villa, who is a founding partner and also a co-presenter of the first part today. Um, she will tell us what CIP does in Mexico and also her role and work in this agenda. She's also a part of one of, part of our team of counselors. And we have people from the Dominican Republic, from the Ministry of Finance, Daniel Torres. We also have people from Costa Rica, Felipe Morera from Innovab, from the civil society. And in this first part of the um, session, we're going to focus from the man Ministry of Finance, what changes has implied to provide information on uh, online portals and in the case of the Dominican Republic they have a very strong portal which has become a very important and useful tool across uh, th throughout the years and we have the pleasure to work together with the Dominican Republic which has been a very steadily growing study case of study and um, And also Costa Rica is going to tell us what they have been doing with the civil society and how their exercises have changed in terms of advocacy, monitoring, and also, yeah, the advocacy for other public policies. After we move on to, to the presentation of Suni and Saben Rasnil, sorry for the pronunciation of uh, his name. And uh, we'll talk about the budgets in Chile and we're going to react to the initial presentations. And I kindly ask each one of you Después nos va a hablar. to react. Afterwards, we're going to talk about, uh, we'll to talk to Paula Manera from the budgeting office in Uruguay. Today is their Independence Day. Congratulations to our Uruguayan participants. And also thank you, Paula, for being here. It is not only a holiday in Uruguay, but the most important holiday in the year. So thank you for being here. And the, she's going to talk about the portales, the, the portals network and the working group we have consolidated in Latin America in order to work on this specific topic. And at the end of our call, I would like to work on this uh, Jamboard, which is a collaborative board that I'm going to open in just a few seconds. It is on the chat, so please take a look at the link. And we're going to work on the questions that motivate this 10 year celebra celebration, where we're heading to and under trying to understand what we have gone through. Also, transparency portals as uh, tools, as a strategy for social in participation whether they will be relevant or not in 10 years and if so what they will look like they have become more and more relevant and it's important to see how they are perceived from the outside so it is important to think of all these things as we listen to the participations 
And there are other questions now that we're getting used to the virtual reality. We hear a lot of uh, words like blockchain, artificial intelligence, algorithms, all this relates to technologies. And one thing that has been, in my case, one of the greatest learning was um, the work of Sony from the, uh, all the processes, the, um, the broken processes. If we do not fix broken processes and turn them into digital processes, they will still be broken digital processes. So we have to rethink the processes. We have to improve our processes before we try to make them virtual and change the, um, the format. So this is a lesson that we have been learning in the past 10 years. And this is something that is very clear to me. Said this, I would like to pass the floor to Suni and please, lead us throughout this path of the first uh, part of the first part of the session so that's what i will try to do so thank you very much welcome ladies and gentlemen to this session that uh, really makes me feel excited because we can acknowledge and see what progress we have been making especially when we are talking about public policy, we would like to see great changes and when we do not see them, we can become frustrated. So I think that in terms of transparency portals, we have seen great progress. And um, only understanding who we are, can we understand who we, uh, where, we, where we're going. So I think this session should be used to understand where we are, what we are doing now, and what we are going to do in the future in order to improve. As I was saying, and as Aura was saying, the CIEP in Mexico is an organization, a civil society organization without any party affili affiliation who seeks for public finances to be sustainable in the long run for the benefit of present and future generations. And for this, the use of open data and transparency portals has been of great use to us. And now it is much easier to have access to information and also to produce better pieces of research. It is important to socialize this and it is easier now. So. Maybe this is only one of one reflection, but I, re I remember that a few years ago, we were debating maybe Lorena, Aura, and I cannot remember who else, when we're talking about the economic package for public finances was a huge book that we had to read uh, within 15 days. So it was almost impossible. And I think that's one of the, great advantages that we have seen in this uh, path towards uh, uh, virtuality. I think the transparency portal is a wonderful work and I always promote it. I always invite people to consult it. And well, I think that this session will help us learn from each other because even if Mexico has made great progress from my perspective, it is also true that the first time they published data, data were there, but it was not a database. There was no uh, dictionary for that. So uh, this is one of the things we have tried to learn about. And this was not focused on the users. And this is what we have learned to focus on recently. I think that what the network promotes is to learn from all these experiences. I think this is not the right moment to explain further because Lorena will tell us a bit more about that, but I would like to pass the floor to, I do not remember whether it was Costa Rica or Chile. Well, so then Daniel Torres from the Dominican Republic, who is going to tell us about the Ministry of Finance and their activities with the transparency portal. And he's going to talk us about how this has evolved and how this has improved the flow of information from the vision and the perspective of the state of the government. Thank you very much. Can you hear me well? 
Gracias, Daniel. Gracias. We can hear you. Uh, let me share my screen. So, uh, can you see the presentation? Before we move on, I would like to thank uh, Gift for being part of this presentation. In this, we only have five minutes. Uh, fiscal transparency portal is very important and it has been around for 10 years for this reason as i told aura i would like to uh, within three or four minutes Um, yeah, people are saying that your voice is very low, so maybe you can speak up or get closer to your microphone. So as I was saying, it is important to show the evolution of our portal and, and see what the impact of this portal has been in public policy. Our portal originates back in 2011 when it was called the citizen dominican citizen portal and this uh, portal was uh, came up due to the demand of different social groups who wanted to make the use of public uh, resources transparent and this included information on income expenditure and financing of all the budgetary collaborations of the different public institutions and this information was very limited because it only information by the central government was presented and this was very complex for common citizens to understand this is the image of the of the website of the portal this was not even called portal or portal it was called portal of the dominican citizen by in 2014, the authorities back then wanted to redesign the portal, but with a different concept and with a broader outreach. The federal national government, who was basically including the central administration, but also the decentralized administration and all their so social security authorities, came up with a better portal with more information and a more visually appealing presentation. So just a second, I am going to see whether I can show you that. This is what the portal looked like. And under this new scheme, uh, sorry, we're not seeing your screen. We're not seeing your shared screen yet. Just a second, I am really sorry. I think um, I was sharing it, but it was interrupted. So just give me a second, please. Okay. We can see the presentation. Perfect. Let's see whether we can work from here. Okay. So we can uh, continue here. I'm really sorry for these technical issues. Can you see the presentation there? Even if it's not on full screen? Yes, we can see it. OK, so let's move on with the presentation. So as I was telling you, under this new scheme, the website of the Ministry of Finance had a series of presentations directed to different groups of stakeholders, the civil society, the media, the radio, and international organizations, in addition to the private sector. And this resulted in different observations made to the portal that would make it more adequate for each one of the groups, because each one of the groups involved presented us with uh, different suggestions. 
So we generated new reports on that. And in 2017, the Ministry of Finance received the cooperation from the Department of State of the United States in order to make the second version of the portal, which is the one you can see here. Can you see it? Can you hear me? OK. Well, so from that moment on, we carried out a more extensive outreach activity, and we got to different groups of interest, such as universities and some schools. This new version of the portal of the website had a very high level of acceptance, and this had a very positive impact in terms of transparency. Unfortunately, the dissemination program was negatively impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. So in the Dominican Republic, as everywhere in the wor world, there were travel restrictions and confinement measures that hindered all these activities. And most of the employees were working remotely from home. And we had a series of very important projects that were stopped due to the pandemic. So it was only this year that things went in a way back to normal and we retook part of the projects. In 2021, we made available the COVID module, which is a section with it within the website of transparency, where the execution of resources earmarked for mitigating the effects of the pandemic were shown. The section was very welcomed by the citizens, although we are yet to include where the resources are obtained. What do we publish here? We publish information of all the social assistance pro programs, such as FASE, Quédate en Casa, Fatiga, which is for independent um, contractors, and all of the contracts that are linked to the mitigation of the pandemic. We also published the incentive issues that are given to the medical personnel who are on the front line of fighting COVID-19 and also the military staff. Other expenses where we can see this reflected is the vaccines and all the mitigation measures faced with the pandemic. For instance, the wearing of or the provision of face masks. And in addition, in the fiscal transparency portal, we created the different moments of expenditure, as we call them. So we had the accrued and the paid amounts. And the society demanded that we should publish all the spectrum of budgetary execution. So this is why we included the preventive and the commitment. So the preventive level is what is going to be budgeted to be part of the acquisition of goods and services. And the commitment is the, app, the approval by the competent authority. So now the citizens have a whole panorama, whole um, scope or the vision of the of the whole process. And another part of the website we launched was the open data section. That is, people could download open format um, files where people can download all the information that we have in the reports in uh, ODS and other types of formats so they can use the data at their own discretion. And the advantage of this section is that it can be done online and each one of the consultations is explained or each one of the data groups are explained. What are the projects we have looking into the future? For, for 2021 or beginning of 2022, we have the design, the redesign of the reports we have on our portal, both the desktop, desktop version and the 
smart versions in the pipeline because most of the reports are responsive, but we have realized that the citizens demand the reports to be redesigned for them to adapt to their mobile devices and for them to be more digestible, more readable. Another project that will start in 2022 is the extension of information on different local activities and public companies. And to conclude, the impact of, of this in public policies, well, I'm going to talk about the three most important will. We have seen a reduction of the request for information and the general directorate of ethics is the government body that manages access to information and the information that is delivered to the citizens. What happens now? In the past, every citizen should or had to address one of the institutions, part of this uh, uh, directorate and request the information. And we had to ver verify that all this information they were requesting was in the portal. So we carried out, we established an agreement with the general directorate of ethics, where we actually establish contact with the people who are in charge of access to information for them to, uh, for every time they received any request, direct the citizens to the portal of tax transparency for them to be able to obtain the information they needed. And once people know how to use the website, they do not need to go in person to request any kind of information. Also, we work in order to establish an indicator for institutional evaluation in terms of budgetary and financial activities. Also with DK, um, for all those informations who are not carrying out this and they are not being transparent for them to, to be penalized for the sake of transparency. And finally, the increase of transparency internationally and also open budget is an issue that has occupied us. And this is where we could mention an assessment of uh, public expense of FIFA in 2016 and the survey of open budget for 2019, where the Dominican Republic saw a very important basis in terms of fiscal issues and budgetary issues. And our main weakness is the issue of budget because we are not publishing it, but I think we can we can take this into account for the future. Well, uh, thank you very much. This is all we have to date. It is very long and I'm really sorry to have used a bit longer than what was my time of intervention yeah uh, we are going to try to stick to the times for everyone to be able to participate so now we're going to pass the floor to our counterpart in costa rica who is felipe morera from innovab who is going to tell us about the transparency website but from the point of view of the civil society i I'm really happy to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. And in order not to take much of your time and to make this quicker, first of all, and in a very concise way, I would like to tell you that InnovAP is um, an initiative supported by the University of Costa Rica, and we focus on the solution of public problems by means of sustainable alternatives that have a great value for the citizens. There are great areas, the innovation of public services, social service, and tools and data for development. What we do in these areas is to work for the opening of data, and we also focus on supporting public institutions for them to open and uh, facilitate data to the citizens. It is thanks to the alliance that we have with all these institutions that we saw the emergence of the Open Budget School, which is an alliance with the General Directorate of National Budgets at the Ministry of Finance. And the school 
emerged because of the uh, the fact of Costa Rica being very low in terms of participation of citizens in uh, fiscal or tax related issues that was seven out of 100 it was one of the worst in the in the world so it is important to train the citizen to be um, involved whether they are journalists students or politicians to understand the tax cycle or the budgetary cycle and for them to have an increased participation across all the stages of the process this will generate value with the use of uh, open data and from the school what we want to generate is input for the ministry of finance to support the citizenship to use the um, portal or the website of the Ministry of Finance and well from school everyone is told how the budget works they talk about law for them to have a general or basic knowledge on law and afterwards they are taught on the use of open data by means of different tools RBI Tableau for the students to be empowered and for them to by means of their own initiative to access the portal of the ministry of finance who has information on the national budget open data and with the use of this information that they can carry out different activities this is something very important to mention is that the citizens the media legislative advisors all these people use the information that they find in our website for understanding the situation of public expenditure in the country for instance and as innovab we are currently working on a project and what we are generating is a dashboard of open data using the information I've just mentioned, that is the national budget information, for it to be a bit easier and more interactive for people to study and analyze these data that are found in the national budget, because not every citizen can understand that. So having a dashboard would make things only easier. Thank you very much, Felipe and now we had a little bit of the vision of the whole work the ministry of finance is carrying out in the dominican republic and it is also important to understand the importance of having a, a portal or a website what we need and then to socialize it even if there is missing information or pending information And it is important to understand that this is not enough if the citizens do not know how the budget in their countries work. As Felipe said in Costa Rica, the civil society has carried out very important work in order to address this part of uh, budgetary education, to put it that way. Now we're going to pass the floor to the Ministry of Finance of Chile, where we're going to listen to some reactions to what has been asked and tell us a bit more about the Chilean experience. Please go ahead, Slaven. Slaven Razmilic, if we do not pronounce it well, let me know. Well, you have no idea the amount of versions I've heard of my last name, so please do not worry about, about this. So, um, Hanna Zoricic from Croatia was around, so, you know, she has the same problem. She was there, but she had some personal situation, so she excused herself. And uh, well, we hope to see her at some point, but it is true that uh, not, we don't all, uh, we don't speak Serbo-Croatian, but uh, well, the funny thing is that uh, Croatian has many consonants, one after the other and but unlike english you can just pronounce things as you read it and slaven is just as you write it as you spell it so 
Great. So very interesting. Everything you are telling about uh, what happens in the Dominican Republic, what happens in Costa Rica was very interesting. And I kept on thinking of these schools of open data. Here we have a very complex challenge between uploading very open information. I mean, you have to strive to have open information as detailed as possible for people to be able to work with data. But but this is very restricted to highly specialized users because these are the ones who manage this information. So it is important to carry out efforts in order to explain and promote the use of this information. We have a, there's a Twitter account with infographics and videos for explaining all these topics. And another idea was to have all the information necessary for this uh, data to be exploited and used the way the, way, the best ways possible. For instance, people who are writing a thesis or students from university. And I also like the interaction in the Dominican Republic in terms of the reduction of consultations by transfer, that is, the more actively you create transparency, the more you can have the, you can grant access to data to the population. And so they have Transparencia Pública and all the consultations they have are, are put together and they sent, for instance, if there is a question by users who have more experience, the first thing you can do and is to look and see whether the question was asked in the past because you can save on time for answering. So that is a win-win situation. I mean, that is, you don't have to go through the whole process to prepare an answer. And for the other party is that it is beneficial because they can just obtain their answers immediately. And this, this doesn't require uh, virtual reality or any kind of complex development in terms of uh, digital technologies. This is something very simple that can be used for this and for other kind of consultations. It is important to talk about the challenges of local governments and non-financial public companies. In Chile, we're finishing an assessment of tax transparency with the International Monetary Fund. And that is where things start getting a little bit more complicated. Uh, because you have to understand all this full information with the connection to local governments and for the rest of uh, budgetary levels. Chile has made great progress in that respect. We have worked not only on the um, on what is uh, shown in the general website, but we're also including this in our tax policies. And we have, as I'm saying, very important challenges. It is difficult to gather the information properly. I think we stopped hearing Slavin. Um, so this relates to the autonomy of the municipal governments in, in Chile. I think we're losing, uh, the communication with Slavin is breaking. Due to the fact that Slavin is having problems with this connection, I think this is a good moment to open the, um, the floor to questions and answers to people who have been part of this discussion. discussion. And using my role as a facilitator, I would like to ask the government of 
the Dominican Republic to tell us a bit more about the data improvement process that they carried out internally and how this or how the F anti-corruption institutions have been using this for their own uh, work and activities. So please, you can raise your hands or write on the chat or open the microphones immediately. So please feel free. Well, on our behalf, the general directorate realized that we were communicating a series of informations they didn't have because we have the whole spectrum of budgetary issues in one place. And what happens in the government? We work in a not very coordinated way and many institutions didn't know there was a website for tax uh, for fiscal transparency. So we had an encounter with the general directorate of ethics and we showed them all this portal and the benefits of it and the head of that institution so they could use that information in order to find out on different cases and that were linked to corruption. Of course, the, the portal doesn't have all of the information there. Uh, the General Directorate of Ethics has the full information of these kinds of cases linked to corruption, but uh, in the portal, you can find some information. And something that was very helpful was the fact that they have um, an office of access to information in each one of the ministries in each one of their offices. And as I was saying, we trained each one of the staff members who were responsible for this. And uh, sometimes the, this staff member has to direct the citizen to the website because in the past, they had to do some research and then the citizen had to wait. So now every time anyone turns to this institution for any issue related to transparency, well, they are immediately directed to the website. And this is when the citizens start learning on the existence of this portal. And this is also when they stopped coming directly to us and they do it themselves online. And Daniel, in that sense, now that you're talking about it, I would like to ask you, what kind of metrics are you using in order to measure this progress or this success? In the case of the Dominican Republic or Costa Rica as well, are there any kind of metrics that you're using in order to know whether you are achieving what you are intending to? Well, I think that for the consultations, we look at Google Analytics. The participant is muting his microphone, so we're going to wait for him to realize. So as I was saying, we use Google Analytics for all the issue of how many people enter our website or when we upload any kind of project on open data or any other project, we saw there was an increase in visits and that, that had an impact. When it comes to the reduction of information requests, that is true. And, but they do tell us that this reduction is very important because of the fact that the citizens didn't know the website or the existence of the web website. And I mean, imagine if one public servant didn't know about it, many public servants didn't know about the existence of the website, let alone the, the citizenship. So what we need currently is to provide additional information because we publish everything in deep detail, 
but the citizens want to want to know more and more and more so and more details so then uh, it is useful to to have very detailed information in these portals i do not know whether felipe from innovap has any response any answer to this on measuring the success of their activities well um for us as citizens or as part of the citizenship Um, the fact of having open data gives us the possibility to analyze the different uh, topics that a few years ago would have been a bit harder to analyze. And now having access from a computer to any public institution and being able to look for this data in a more, in an easier way makes the work easier and helps us not to have so much bureaucracy. Um, from Inoab, the impact equally at Inoab, the of impact open of data and the project of the school I talked data. about generated different projects, and we can also see this as as a type of measuring success. So there were three projects. One was Mission Pupitre which uh, made traceab trace traceability um, core topic at the Ministry of Finance as relates the the projects uh, in schools and Mission Propite started tracing the results and we noticed that at some point the results are lost. So this is thanks to the open budget school and their activities and it is clear that people can do things, they can do this thanks to open data by different institutions. Thank you so much, Felipe. I would like to know if Slavin would like to finish his comment. If that's not the case, I will give back the floor to my colleague. I don't know if I was cancelled because of the time or what has happened. I just wanted to take advantage of these measures. And I wanted to say how they have operated so well with the topics of financial management. I think that's linked to another kind of incentives. And it is difficult to apply it in practice. So we associate that kind of mechanisms. I would like to speak about how the experience has been in this aspect and the incentives associated to them. We coordinate in a joint effort with the General Secretariat, but the important part is the scope they have. This obliges all of the institutions within that institutional level to have that kind of information. So that's why we're going to start publishing information afterwards, because that's not within the scope. So what does that indicator do? The institutions that have to execute it in the systems and that are not doing it, which is, would be weird because they already know that they're obliged to do it. But we already know that each institutions have some things to improve. So if some institutions are not executing that point, well, we will give them the indicator they would have a tax penalty because they're not sharing their information. That indicator is relatively new. And Milagros Ortiz Bos wants to 
through the assessments done in coordination with the executive power, I mean directly with the presidency, to have those penalties to those who are not executing that. Perhaps it will be donated to some specific funds so that these institutions will be obliged to execute that point. So I don't really like it because there is a law, so we shouldn't have this conversation. But since we see this weakness, we have understood that this is the best mechanism to, to make the institutions that are not executing this point to start complying to, that, to this principle. What we want to do is to make it evolve. And once we have all of the institutions that execute this example, we need to see the publication and then we can measure if a ministry is spending the resources in an efficient way. And then we can implement other penalty mechanisms that will be linked to the budget subject because we all know that that is what obliges a ministry to try to comply and to be coherent. Thank you very much, Daniel. Now we will give the floor to Laura. Thank you very much. I would like to say that we are writing some questions in the chat. I think this is very interesting and these will lead us to the final reflection about penalties and it is a subject that has been mentioned in other forums. And we know that we have some representatives of the portals and we would like to provide this information in the chat. If you have any information about your own country or if you are trying to promote this information and we want to make sure that this is uh, quality information. So please feel free to use the chat if you have any questions for Paula so she can answer those questions at the end of her presentation. So without further ado, I give the floor to Paula. Hello, good morning, good afternoon. Thank you very much for this space. I need to apologize because I have the flu, so perhaps I will cough or perhaps I will have to stop for a while if I sneeze. But first of all, I would like to present this guide. Can I share my slides? Please. Yes, you should be able to share them. Well, can you see that? I would like to show you the transparency portal. But first of all, I would like to make a brief review, a brief description of the antecedents and how we reached this point with a portal that we have, and especially our journey in transparency terms. Those who don't know Uruguay journey and especially the support that we had during the last few years and since the beginning actually with gift who, that has favored our work so from the budget office we have this great interest to make this information available this format is for different kinds of audiences and we have these different norms. These norms that regulate the information publication in a certain way. And we have the public information by regions also, besides the open government in 2011 in Uruguay, and we have started working in the specific area. 
and the budget transparency area with a very well-defined area in governance and supported in agreements and international links. Another important aspect to highlight is that we had incorporated it as a commitment in 2016. And the portal team, the OPP portal team started working on that and they helped us, as I said it previously, with a training or with international examples and knowledge and to improve what we already had. We already had an antecedent, an observatory of public policies, and we had entered and we had started this kind of interactive formats and open formats. And this represented an important step for us. So we had to accompany that process. Since 2016, we started the design of a different portal with a national budget, with financial information from a public companies and states and a public budget portal. So we had the participation of civil society who helped us to define the contents that were going to be published on the website. So we keep working on that. The progress that we've had, we've made some progress in some specific work lines that are within the portal regarding budget literacy, for example. All of the colleagues' interventions were extremely interesting and also the Costa Rica's experience, which is incredible. So we've started some years ago and we have tried to transform in a certain way because all of the information and the efforts were linked to the face-to-face -face activities. But we had the pandemic that made us transfer that knowledge to other alternatives. And we continued making progress on that and we kept working on that. And with the public educational institutions in our way. And we could incorporate the specific commitment that will provide more tools and will make easier all of the participation and the understanding so that people can understand all of the information that is presented to them and also enabling this access to the governments. And also during this journey, during this time, we encountered different challenges, but we could fulfill some of the objectives, not all of them, and we work in the public area and we know that the processes can take longer than what we expected, but we have learned from those mistakes and from those things that need to be improved. And regarding the learnings and in, with the objective to favor transparency, we have participated in a portal project, which is called Transparency. It is a collaborative work project within the region. It is a certain way to work in team. We have generated this project with GIFT that supported us since the beginning with this idea. Without this support, perhaps we wouldn't have done it because we felt that the portal was already mature and we had to generate some synergy and generate this knowledge and generate these links between the different portals the transparency portals within the region. So the portal has the objective to 
enable the exchange of experiences and tools between or among different countries and transparency portals. It has the objective to identify the similarities and differences regarding the administration and operation in the different countries. We know that we have many differences that we have seen in the different portals and we need to identify how to exchange this different knowledge. So this is the, the Americas with the different members of the portals. And here we have all of the performed activities. Last year, we maintained the distance and we had this idea that was well received by the colleagues. And we started presenting the project to the network, to the team. We presented the proposal with the design. We designed a survey to be able to communicate this to the network and the application that had some specific features and variables that perhaps I'm not going to explain right now, but I could explain it in another moment with further details. The initial survey with the results in 2021 and the different specific subject audiences that perhaps came up from uh, that uh, survey. Mexico and Brazil showed us their different experiences and their progress. And we had a presentation session from Costa Rica and Norway. So during this first survey, what were the most important characteristics or the results? We got to know the subjects within the portals. We had a global view of the network members and we saw the information published in those portals. What are the communication channels for those users? And we also spoke about standardization and interoperability. So we called everyone because we we're trying to keep going on this subject. And it is a way to strengthen the information systems. So we identified some pending agendas in those portals. As I said it before, we can keep going. It seems to be a little bit short, but I could show to you some of the results. Perhaps I could share a screenshot of all of the progress and all of the pending subjects. We will continue with the specific audiences to be able to exchange knowledge within those terms like communication, social network, the positioning and web visits, just as the colleagues mentioned it. We are using those measurements to know at what moment we have a greater audience and if it is working or not regarding specific topics. And I think that it is also a way to share and to keep working jointly beyond the differences, just as it was said before. And the suggestions that the member consider to be adequate to keep working because we want to have a collaborative work this is a network where we exchange and we collaborate. And the leadership is shared with GIFT. This is a joint work, so 
If you have any suggestions, we can keep working as a team. So I am available. I'm here and I can answer your questions. Thank you very much. en tu día de independencia enferma eres nuestra heroína el día de hoy <laughs> eh, y gracias a la OPP eh, también por su colidera thank you very much Paula you are a great leader and thank you many of who those of you who have worked during these sessions have found them super enriching and not only through the meetings of the the general sorts meeting we can keep up to date and we sometimes have an idea that we present for the operation so we know that we cannot wait now i would like to ask lorena caballero from mexico to speak about her experience with this portals work team and also Mexico's experience is a little bit longer and also the portals work is very important and congratulations to the Dominican Republic for that presentation we have the same idea of the citizen portal so this is a joint celebration now I'll give the floor to Lore so that she can share her comments with us. We have a very specific doubt in the chat regarding the politicization of the information. I only have one slide because I think that I have to try to summarize, but I just need to share it. So. This initiative promoted by Uruguay is an important point for many of us who are participating here in this portals network. I'm sorry, I thought you were desperate, but I didn't know why. Oh yeah, I couldn't share my screen. As I said before, I think that one of the things that is one of the first points of encounter. Muy relacionado con la presentación de Paula, es que creo que todos tenemos que repensar un poco, dado que nuestros portales han ido evolucionando a través del tiempo y no todos surgieron. It is the first thing that we have to do, and it is related to the portals, and they were much more limited. I think that we are all in this point where we have to think what are those faculties that we do have to share information and what's the journey to present the information in the better possible way. And in Mexico, we are thinking once again in the portal, not only as an observatory, but also with a broader view and the portal needs to be logical and useful for the citizens. So here we have all of the information available and that's what we are doing at the moment to have an idea that we have overcome what we had. So what's the next step forward? How can we communicate it to the citizenship? The fact that we still have this will to have a transparent budget because that goes beyond our performance. Uh, we present the performance assessment. We are trying to have a comprehensive initiative. And as Paula said it before, I think that we have many aspects that we need to consider. We should highlight the common points and we should try to, to consider what are the other points. 
experiencias de las formas o los distintos tipos de presentación. We de should la... get to know the different ways to present the information that is available. And as it was said before by our colleagues in Costa Rica, Mexico already had a lot of information and I think that in Mexico we have a big challenge which is citizen participation. Just as Danielle said it, we need to have a greater institutional coordination to have a more comprehensive involvement of budget transparency. And that, those are our reflection points, but I would like to reconsider this question that is in the chat. Because of the particular situation that we are facing in Mexico today, I think that it is super interesting, the fact of having the synergies and collaboration, which in the Mexican case, it is an autonomous institution that will surveil the information topic. And of course, we have synergies and collaboration, but we've had some reserves in maintaining budget transparency or a proactive and citizen participation without a penalty or punishment focus that has been proposed during the last few times to try to link this information or the content of the transparency portal with some penalties actions or punishment actions like in other institutions, like in Mexico, the Ministry of the Public uh, function. And we have tried to maintain and to be very clear in the fact that we don't want to lose the proactive transparency. And having this closeness with the citizens, but also with the public servants. So that's my question. How do you achieve that? Because the risk that we could have is to lose the public servants and that if the public servants start seeing us just as a fiscal institution. So I would like to make this question to the Uruguay Initiative that we thank so much about the transparency portals and I also thank the first presentations. Thank you so much, Lori. I think that you have mentioned some very interesting points. Currency portals are a window that let us see what the government is doing. And obviously that depends on our behavior and that can generate many difficulties regarding the intergovernmental communication and in the communication of the agencies that operate and that execute those budgets. I'm going to share my screen because I have seen that our Jamboard is full of stickers. It is ready with the different questions. And well, I hope we can finish on time so that you can go back to your opportunities. And as we have said it before, we really appreciate the time that you give us. And we know the importance of the civil society's monitoring of the budget. And we appreciate that you are using this time to join this meeting. And well, we would like to improve and to help us. I would like to thank you and I would like to show you the Jamboard and the questions, where are we going and how are we getting there? Are we still going to be relevant? Here we have different voices. And I would like to see if Gustavo could speak about the post-it in this Jamboard. 
And please keep posting your stickers while we speak. So Gustavo, can you please explain your post-its? Yes, of course. Please excuse me if you hear some noises because I have some um, construction uh, works in my house. So regarding the first question about where are we going and how are we getting there? I think that's a greater challenge to increase accountability and transparency. Well, I think that first of all, we need to have more information in the portal. We should work on analyzing what is within the budget and then the public expenses that sometimes as surfacing the budget. And we need to include some detailed information and also the tax expenses, which are some measures that don't represent a resource or a financial source. That is on the one side. On the other side, if the transparency portals are going to be relevant, well, I think they will. Regardless of the format, the information will be more relevant than the portals. And we need to keep working so that this information is open and understandable. That's what the colleague said before. Sometimes not even the public servants know that the portal exists. That has happened before. For example, I remember that some years ago in an interview, there was a journalist that was interviewing the Ministry of Education. And he asked him about the budget number. And the ministry said something, but the journalist said, hey, but in this portal, uh, there's written something different. And I think that we need to keep working on this area and especially so that the public can be based on data and well the public servants will have their own ideas about what to do with the resources but at least they will have more transparency and we will certainly need to increase the usage of more disruptive technology we will need a more proactive communication and a better directed communication, especially related to the needs of the citizens. Because we need to have the information available, but we also need to answer to questions so that people can use the information. Thank you very much, Gustavo. I think that that is an excellent reflection. First of all, the Ministry of Education will be invited to the board portals work team, team group. And then we will invite other countries. And then Mexico has another experience working with the Ministry of Education. And this reflection that Gustavo has made is really important. Trying to lead that research regarding the transparency portals, I participated in a forum where it was mentioned that nobody has to teach us how to use a table. Nobody has taught us to use Google. You will never look for a tutorial about how to use Google or how to buy a trip. In that sense, those things are made to respond to a need. So if you need to make too many explanations, that means that this was not accessible and it was not simple. So I would like to highlight what Gustavo said. We need to use 
the technologies to answer to questions and we could have very particular and very specific information for the people, for the different audiences. And we will also have more general information for another kind of audience. So that comment that Gustavo has made seems to be super relevant. I would like to close with this same reflection on behalf of the co-leader in this session, Sumi, who has also answered these three uh, questions. So if we don't have any other hands raised, I would like to hear Sunni. So perhaps she can close the session with the answers to the last questions. So please, Sunni, go ahead. Thank you very much. From a very personal perspective, I think that many paths should lead us to the transparency way. So first of all, the common citizens, the general citizens should have access to the fiscal policy. We have the right to know how we pay and how the money is used. How can we do that? Finally, this work, this joint work between the government and the civil society, I think that they're a good tool and they should promote it. And we should think about how to reach the common citizen so that we can be more involved in these programs. I think that the FTPs will be relevant in 10 years. Yes, I think they are a tool. As you know, it is a human right. And that's why we should use and promote the portals. But I think that there is still a long path to walk because we need to be known by more people. But I think that we are going towards that direction. We should incorporate the new technologies for the information search. So I think that that's so easy. When we open a Google website, we will have the questions that we're looking for. And perhaps the new portals will have that feature so that when you open your screen, you will have the new update of that specific information and the user won't, I mean, so that we won't, don't lose that focus centered on the user. So we will keep that reflection and that's what I wanted to say. Will the portals be relevant in 10 years? And what will they look like? Well, I think that they should be inclusive they should include subjects that affect the most the vulnerable groups like climate change and gender. So I hope that the portals can help us to create this reality. And I hope that in 10 years, we will have a more equal world. Thank you very much to you all. We really appreciate your presence and participation. And a uh, row of applauses to Paula, who, who was the um, today's MVP. And thank you very much to everyone for your time. But we still need to make the photo. Oh, that's true. I was just reading the post-its. Now speaking about communication and well, please smile during this last part of the session you can turn on your cameras. That we're uh, th thinking in. I saw Claire Rautista from the uh, Philippines. Thank you very much. I also see Aisha. So Aisha, somewhere I see people from 
other um, Tunisia. parts Aisha of from Tunis. Uh, yeah, I, I miss Tunisia. When people moving their cameras, I, I things move. Thank you also, Dr. Anne. I see Daniel from the Cabri um, um, uh, from Africa. So thank you Initiative, all. Yeah. That, that Leonardo. Joined. Leonardo Colón. Ah, ahí tenemos Leonardo. Thank you for joining. Thank you for Foto. listening. And now we'll take the picture. Thank you very much. All right, in three, two, one, smile. <laughs> Great.